I just wanted to share a quick game from today. And it was literally pretty quick. Uh, it was played between Magnus Carlsen. So that was a sound in the ceiling. I don't have upstairs neighbors. I don't know what that was. Anyway, today, uh, Magnus Carlsen played Ding Loren in a really, really cool London opening game. It was technically a miniature, and not only did it feature the London, but it featured like a really cool novelty gambit from early on. So let's jump into it. Magnus with white played, uh, played the kind of typical starting London moves. And um, this was the second game that they played in their, their mini match. After bishop f4, c5, e3, e6, and now c3. So I think there's a lot of people out there, even like beginner players, that if they play the London opening, they could very easily play exactly these moves and basically get to the same position. Um, now Ding here played one of the most topical moves, basically the main line, bishop d6, uh, challenging the bishop on f4. And from this position, white does have a few options. I've, I've taught this many times to beginners and, and to students and in various lectures, and I usually recommend bishop g3 here, which I think is the simplest move, where white leaves a tension between the bishops, and if ever bishop takes g3, you can take back with h-pawn and enjoy the, the half-open h-file. In this position, rather than using a tempo to retreat the bishop, Magnus just left the bishop on f4, and continue development with knight bd2. And this is actually a more kind of trendy way of playing. And this idea can be used in, in similar positions where white accepts double f pawns, but then has very good control over e5. That pawn on f4, it looks weak, but if ever, like queen here or here, um, at the very least, white has g3, if not knight e5. So this structure is, uh, is quite pleasant for white, where um, white has a good bishop, black's a little bit passive, with the bishop stuck on, on c8. So Ding left the tension between the bishops and took on d4. And this move exploits the fact that white can't take back with e-pawn, of course, because the bishop would hang on f4. So it looks really obvious here to take with a c-pawn, um, though this would kind of leave things very symmetrical. So in this position, Carlson actually came up with a novelty. I looked this up in the Mega Database, and the move that Magnus played has never been seen before, at least in, in high-rated over-the-board play. And the move is bishop takes d6. And at first this looks like a mistake because of what Ding played in the game. Uh, in between move d takes e3, counterattacking the knight, and now white has both pieces hanging. It looks like white's in trouble here. But I'm almost positive that Magnus had prepared this position beforehand. Uh, if we look at the time here, Ding has already used uh, close to four minutes off his clock. And Magnus has, has more time than he started with. I believe the, the game was 15 plus 10. So Magnus is clearly still in prep. And he blitzed out the move bishop to a3. So allowing black to take the knight, and after queen takes d2, a position arises where white's down a pawn, but white has the only dark squared bishop uh, placed on a really, really nice diagonal, and the bishop is preventing black from castling. Of course, it's, it's imbalanced, and it's a question of whether white has compensation, but I think what ended up happening in this game proves that this position is actually pretty difficult for black to play. And it's not so easy to solve this castling problem. And meanwhile, the king is in the center with white having two bishops and a lot of potential to have really nice piece activity. Um, so going forward from here, Ding played knight c6. And it's very likely this move was played intending to play knight e7 to castle. And if black gets just these two moves in, then black should be able to consolidate and uh, probably just have a better position. So from here, Magnus struck immediately, played the very adventurous queen g5. 
uh, which simply attacks the pawn. And it creates a situation where if black, of course black wants to defend the pawn, but whatever black plays to defend the pawn, black has to make some concession. And really the, the two moves to defend are either g6 or rook g8. Now g6, which was not played in the game, is just terribly weakening. Uh, whenever there's so many pawns on light squares, the dark squares are, are obviously weak, and the queen and bishop team up very nice. h6 is a gaping hole, the queen is tied down to the knight, the king still can't castle, and this would be very, very pleasant for white. So Ding played rook g8 in the game, which uh, avoids weakening the dark squares, but of course gives up a king's side casting rights and makes it so the king is either stuck in the center or will have to castle queenside. Now from here, Magnus completed development, bishop d3, h6 was played, queen retreated, queen b6. And this is a really important moment because maybe a lot of beginners here would be inclined to take and damage black's pawn structure. But of course, white is down a pawn, so you don't want to be trading without any good reason. And more importantly, white's king just has a very safe place, while black's king will be much more exploitable. So with all that in mind, it makes sense for white to avoid the queen trade. Magnus played queen e2 here. After bishop d7, castling, Ding decided to castle queenside. And uh, we reached this position where it seems like black has actually solved most of the problems still has a very nice two center pawns, is up a pawn, everything's defended in black's position. But it was from here where Magnus played some, some really kind of brilliant moves and found a, a really nice kind of flowing plan. And uh, upon reviewing this game, I was actually really impressed with Magnus's next move. And it's a type of move I don't think I would consider myself. So I'd like to give viewers a chance to try and find this move. Um, now this is not a tactic, it's just white to move and try and come up with a plan. You're down a pawn, how can you stir up some, some ideas, some initiative, and try and cause problems for black? Okay, so before I show what Magnus played, I just want to talk about a few key observations in the position. First of all, there, there's one very key center square that white would like to control, which is e5. This is a very typical of weak square in the London where white has good potential to, uh, to get a knight to e5 and further pressure black's position. Um, another weak point in black's position is this f7 pawn, which currently has no defenders. And it's not easy for black to add a defender because the, the bishop controls f8, so there's no rook f8. And if we start imagining that we get a knight to e5 so it can attack f7, that would be the best way to exert pressure on black's position. Um, now, unfortunately, if we play knight e5 right away, this isn't so effective. Black can just take, and white's not really achieving so much with this trade. Uh, so the main idea here is to try and force the knight away from c6, so we can get in knight e5. And the move to play is pawn to b4. So congratulations to, to anyone who, who found this move. Maybe special congratulations to Magnus Carlsen for, uh, for finding the really strong idea. Uh, simply wants to play b5 and then chase away this knight so white's knight can enter e5 safely. So it seems natural for black to try a6 to prevent b5. Um, but this only makes b5 stronger, and white can still play this. And after the trade of pawns, the b file is now half open for white. Rook b1 will come, and this is just really, really pleasant for white. So in the game, Ding tried king to b8, uh, just trying to, to get the king to a slightly safer square. Now Carlson continues, pawn b5, knight a5, and now knight e5. And we're beginning to see white form a really nice grip on the position, uh, attacking f7. Sadly for black, there's only one way to defend f7, which is bishop e8. Really sad square for the bishop. This disconnects the rooks. And going forward from here, black's pieces were really just stuck. Magnus played bishop to b4. And if we just glance at black's setup, 
This knight is completely stuck on a5. The bishop is tied down to the pawn. This rook is stuck on the king's side. The queen is stuck defending the knight. Um, this knight doesn't seem to have any special squares. So even though white's still down a pawn, this is some very, very nice positional compensation. If we look at white's peace harmony, everything has kind of a, a nice home. Of course, the rooks can be improved, but right now white is just dominating most uh, most of the key squares in the position. So here, Ding played rook to c8. Uh, white played a4, just reinforcing this this b5 pawn. Now the bishop is even more sat on on e8. Bishops do not like to stare at pawn chains like this. And now Ding kind of panicked and played knight e4. And I don't think you can blame him for this move, because I mean, what else to do? If, if you look at the engine here, the engine will suggest this very sad move, queen d8, which just doesn't seem to have a purpose. And um, in, in positions where your pieces are just stuck, I think it's much, much easier to, to make mistakes. Um, now, knight e4 was just kind of self-destructive. The idea was to play f6, uh, but of course this gives white a pawn after takes, takes, takes. Um, and after f6, it looks like black is getting some initiative, looks like the bishop might free. I'm sure Ding was fantasizing about improving his pieces, but Carlson really just didn't give him any time. And rather than moving the knight away from e5, uh, Magnus found a really, really nice counterattack, went for queen h7, basically trapping the rook. If we notice, the rook really doesn't have any squares, f8 is covered by the bishop. And black would like to somehow connect the rooks by moving this bishop, but this bishop really doesn't have any squares. Can't move to d7, can't move to c6. If it moves to h5, knight d7 is just a fork winning the queen. So at this point, it's already winning for, for white. Ding tried one kind of last ditch effort, went for knight b3, uh, counterattacking the rook. But after queen takes g8, knight takes a1, uh, the icing on the cake, Magnus played one more move, which is kind of a queen sacrifice, but not really. The queen takes e8, simply removing the bishop from defending e7 with idea after rook e8, knight g7 will win the queen, and then white will pick up the knight in the end and have an easily winning endgame. So Ding resigned after queen takes e8. It is true that maybe black could try taking the knight here, but after a move like queen h5, the knight is still hanging, this pawn is now hanging, assuming the knight moves, white can take with check and pick up this pawn, and it's a pretty easy win for white going forward from here. So I really enjoyed this game, um, not only because it, uh, it featured a, a new idea, which I've never seen before in the London opening, but uh, featured some really, really nice kind of positional play where White was down a pawn early, but found some nice uh, nice compensation, and goes to show that material isn't everything. It was really a brilliant game on Magnus's part, and I think this goes to show why the London opening can still live on, there can still be new innovations, even from very early on. I mean, the, the novelty in this game was move 7, which is, uh, which is pretty mind-blowing. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, speaking of the London, I do plan to upload my London-themed match against Levy Rosman, also known as Gotham Chess. That'll probably be my next upload. Um, I usually upload at 7 a.m. Central Time. And I don't want to spoil the result of that match, but we had some really cool games, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun kind of variety of lines in the London opening. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And also... Speaking of Gotham Chess, I'll be joining him tomorrow on his channel. It will also be on Hikaru's Twitch channel. We'll be doing commentary of day two of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Finals, where we'll see many more games uh, between these players. So mark your calendars for August 10th, um, probably, probably about 12 hours uh, after the, the post of this video. So with that, I really hope you guys have a good day, or a good night, or a good bishop.